Time jumps are a very complicated element to introduce into a story. Due to the nature of jumping time, it's hard to transition a story while maintaining continuity and balance. Normally stories fail to build up enough connection and lose touch with each time period, creating a division in the narrative, ultimately causing everything to fall apart. It's a very hard technique to ingratiate into your narrative, but if done right it can create a glorious web of characters and story, creating a great overall piece full of substance and fluidity. Two shows I've been keeping my eye on this season use this narrative technique. In this video I'm going to look at how each example handles this intricacy and have a look at what makes it work and what doesn't. Now there will be very minor details about the early events of each anime, so keep that in mind. Show again, Roku tells the story of an aspiring Rakugo artist. The story jumps time in a very interesting way. It spends the first two episodes creating rich visual and narrative links between each storyline. We're slowly introduced to the older timeline during the first two episodes, before we even take the jump. Concrete connections are created initially to solidify the links between characters, giving each person an emotional and sometimes visual attachment to everybody else. After the jump, Genroko merges each time period rather than creating a distinction. Similarities are so heavily used that sometimes you forget that the story has jumped at all, one of the biggest being between Yatoro and Hatsaruto. Obviously Kikohiko is literally the same person, providing an immediate link between timelines. But over time, similarities between our other two characters build and we have another link. Larger similarities such as appearance, plot points and personalities are clear and effective, but the more subtle links are what makes this transition work so well. For example, Hatsurato is pictured here. Note the similarities between this scene with Yotaru. Little things like this help to not only develop the characters generally, but to smooth out the transition between timelines, achieving, as I mentioned, a singular rolling storyline rather than two independent stories. Boku Machi jumps between time not as a story, but through supernatural elements. The character literally jumps between him being almost 30 to being a child in school, yet he retains the brain of his 30 year old self. Despite this more obscure approach, I think Bokumachi does a good job at transitioning into the other timeline. With a more dramatic introduction to the series, something like this doesn't feel as out of place as you might presume. With the use of simple storytelling and symbolic camera work, I felt it built up a fairly strong few episodes in the other timeline. I was engaged with the characters and their interactions. It was as the story started to unravel that the cracks began to show for Bokumachi's time jump. It didn't explain much in the school period, which is fair enough. It would be a bit jarring for a child to handle all the plot points brought up in episode 1, but consequently, on arrival back to the present day, the damage shows. There was way too much to handle, causing transition to be anything but smooth. Because the school timeline neglected a lot of the plot points we now had to face, for example the police and most of the characters, we feel a big disconnect when an overwhelming amount of plot points are handed to us. Not to mention the poorly handling of some of these elements. For example, our main character running away from the police for multiple episodes despite being completely innocent. He was still acting like a child despite transitioning back to an adult. It kind of just became a bit jarring and confusing. There was multiple poorly explained plot points like this and it just didn't help its cause at all. Another big problem with the transition between timelines was the visuals. I understand that the high school had a different, distinct look, and I actually felt that worked, adding to the simplicity of being a child. But on return, the creative cinematography and interesting animation seemed to just disappear, and the animation drop can be quite easily credited to episodes 5 and 6 being outsourced. Once again, disconnecting the timelines and creating a generally unpleasant transition. Now this criticism might seem a bit specific for the series overall. I'm focusing only on the time jump. Bokumachi does some interesting things, but unfortunately it doesn't handle its time jumps well at all. So what are the main causes for good and bad time jumps in these cases? It seems to me that it's all about the fluidity of the jump. It's much more effective to slowly ease the viewer into a new environment instead of throwing them in the deep end. Even if you want to create an intense story, you have to have a solid enough foundation already set up to do so. Create strong links, utilise those links to connect characters and story, and move at a speed relative to the story you're trying to tell. That's my impressions of what Shao Genroko and Bokumachi have done so far with this technique. But what do you think? Do you think Bokumachi did a good job at transitioning between jumps? And how did you feel about Shao Genroko's handling? Post your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video please do click the like button and share it around. And you can also subscribe for similar content. Cheers.